All right, now one of the things too is that people feel that, you know, there's really nothing I can do about it because it's my genes. I got dealt a bad hand. Is, are our genes our fate? <laughs> Absolutely not. <clears throat> so genes aren't your fate. If you can think of your genetics or your genes, <clears throat> are sets of codes within programs within all of your cells. And whatever the program comes or whatever the signal is that talks to those set of codes either dictates healthy function or disease. For example, <clears throat> how many women, uh, we've all heard of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 breast cancer gene, correct? Yes? Yes. Good. So <clears throat> how many women, if, they're, if they have been gene tested, have BRCA1 and BRCA2 at 13, 14 years old, how come they don't have breast cancer at 13, 14 years old? So we have to also think about genes aren't just our, our destiny, but what is it that we do to ourselves and the internal environment that we create that then sets those genes, those programs for disease? If you have an inflammatory lifestyle, lots of stress, lack of socialization, inflammatory foods, a lack of exercise, you actually set the stage internally for the disease process. So you're basically just turning, you're flipping on switches that create disease. Genes aren't your fate. What you do to them is your fate. However, the research studies show that 30% of your health destiny is determined by your genes. 70% is up to you. And I want you to, to be empowered by that statement. Not like, oh my God, that means I can really screw up, but be empowered. <laughs> That means you have a lot of power to keep yourselves healthy. But then the next thing is the mindset. And that, you know, Dr. Dave, you, you say that there's a very thin line between self-love and selfish. And a lot of women think that they're being selfish if they take a little time out to get a massage or to rest or to sleep an extra hour. So we need to work on our belief systems. We need to use the strategies and support that we have developed and that work for us so that we can own our power, be present, and say, I will overcome this challenge. I can. I believe in myself. And I believe in this particular protocol. As we do that, we start to change. When it comes to self-love, that involves drinking good water, eating good food, exercising, resting, and playing. And we need to be present with our minds. When it's selfish, it's I'm not paying attention to anybody else. I'm disregarding others. So that thin line with ladies in general, you don't do that. You never disregard others usually. I mean, if you don't take care of yourself first, you're not going to be any good to anyone else because you're going to be stressed out, exhausted, resentful, and, and unhealthy. You know, you see women every day. They come into you, and they're always like, how am I supposed to get this done? Where do you think we go wrong, Beth? You know, we would never leave the door without a map in our hand if we were going on a trip. But when we wake up in the morning, we, most of us, have no plan on what we're going to eat for the day, what workout we're going to do, and where our, our time is delved out. And so I think a lot of it is planning. It is. And I'll venture to say that most women probably say when they come to you, I want to lose weight. And yes. that term, <laughs> that's one of Dave's, Dr. Dave's pet peeves. Yes. Talk about the term that's used so often, losing weight. Well, when we say we lose weight, somehow, some way, we're going to find it. Why is it so difficult? I mean, what are the things that we really do wrong just in meal planning and timing and everything that, that just, that we, where we sabotage ourselves? <clears throat> I think uh, the focus is so ingrained in us to lose weight rather than to be healthy or to have a healthy body composition, which is lean muscle and low fat. So you want to be lean and low fat. But I think where, where people go wrong, um, one, we, we get these understandings or we get this information out there that says, well, let's skip breakfast because if, bre if I skip breakfast, it'll be less calories for the day. Un unknowingly, what you're doing is driving, up, driving stress hormones up and, and, and causing a dysregulation of your blood sugar, which causes belly fat, for one. The other thing we, we, we commonly see, or I think is a problem, <clears throat> there's a slew of reasons why people uh, have difficulty losing, losing body fat. Some of it's an emotional component. 
Some of it is thyroid-based problems, hormone-based problems. Sometimes it's the inflammatory foods you eat. As, as, as I say all the time, you eat most of the food when the sun is out, not when the moon is out. Because when you do that and you eat most of your calories at night, you actually increase insulin and you shut off growth hormone, and you actually get fat and sick while you sleep. So I think there's a lot of reasons why it's difficult where we're in a society of just looking good and losing weight as opposed to focusing on really what, what the issue is with being low fat and lean. I love an analogy that Cheryl uses that our body is the engine, the, engine. the food is the fuel. Right, food is coal, gas, and wood. The <laughs> problem is that we think it's comfort and safety and we are feeding hungers that are emotional hungers and I'm sure that's something that you talk about all the time. We eat to be comfortable and to run away from things that we don't want to confront. We need to find some underlying causes of why we're protecting ourselves and those are the emotional levels that you are talking about. There is a protection going on and I can eat all the right foods, I can exercise till the cows come home and I still am not losing the weight. First of all I need to shed the pounds I don't need but it's a protection, and that's where we go into the counseling and finding that out. And I think Dave's point, uh, Dr. Coppola's point before, <clears throat> having an awareness of what's happening within you, whether there's fear, or guilt, or post-traumatic stress, do, is it really a hunger or is it a craving for something that's hidden as far as a feeling or a suppressed emotion? Mm -hmm. So when we have suppressed emotion, what do we do? We crave things and we go to comfort foods, salt, sugar, and fat, which then does, does what? Gives us that momentary, ah, I feel good, I had some dark chocolate. But at the same time, now you're causing complete chaos internally, causing health issues and, and problems, as we've mm -hmm. talked about being aware of your emotion. The other well, thing is you eat when you feel bad, and then you feel bad because you ate, and then you eat more, and then you feel bad, and then you just start <laughs> circling the drain. <laughs> How do we break that cycle? If you're really serious and it's time for you to make changes in your life, it needs to, you know, you make those goals, and they're always elusive. I want to make, I want to lose weight. But we forget the implementation part of what that looks six months down the road, you know, the old short-term, long-term goals, and what it looks like in three months, but most importantly, what it looks like day to day and hour to hour, right. and learning all the things that we teach from what to eat, and most importantly, even what not to eat, and implementing them. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're saying. Sometimes we got to get help. Mm -hmm. But sometimes even when we seem to, to read a lot about it and we are actually learning, we feel like we know a lot about it, it's still hard, Cheryl, to kind of fit it in and figure out how to actually take that and make it work in our lives. Well, I was talking to somebody about writing. You have to give yourself that time. Believe that you deserve to have that time, and then you sit down and plan it out. You have time. You have every minute God gave you. The question is, how are you going to invest it, and are you going to make yourself a priority? Put yourself at least closer to the top of the to-do list, and I think that's important. But I think the other thing we have to do is generate joy. You know, do something every day that gives you unmitigated joy for no reason. It doesn't have to be productive. I like to write, other people like to read, other people like to play the piano, even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes a day. Dave, yeah. I mean, that idea of self-worth is just so important. That's where a lot of people like, don't even realize they go down the drain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, we want to be able to believe that we are worthy for this change. We want to make peace with where we are and make the healthy choices. So what I think is a great idea for people to do is start looking for the good in everything. Start looking what's good about this, about that situation. Instead of what's bad and getting into that protective mode and defensive mode, make choices on saying, oh, this is great. There is a lot that each and every one of us can do. And it's important that we become conscious of all this. And we understand how important it is to learn about this, to read about this, to start making little changes in our lives day by day because the investment that we make today in our health is really going to absolutely determine the quality of our life 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now.